Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Skoda 130. And if you're an American like me, you're probably like, what in the world is a Skoda? Well, I spent the last three years researching it, and I still don't know what a Skoda is, but I do know the 130L is the base version of the vehicle, and this is what it looks like. Now, really, this vehicle is just a normal family sedan from many, many years ago, but there's one interesting trait about it. It's a rear-engine vehicle, so if we go over here and tear that off, you can see, there's the engine in the rear. And then if we go over here to the front and we tear off the frunk, you can see, boom, there is storage. So it's really unusual to see a normal family sedan that's rear engine. It used to be more common back when this car was produced, but nowadays it's basically unheard of. So let's put those body panels back on this thing and drive it a little bit. Now this car isn't super powerful or anything. You know, you think, oh, the engine is behind the driver. It's going to be real powerful, but no, it's more like... The Volkswagen Beetle, where it's a car that just happens to have the engine behind the driver, because this thing doesn't make that much power. It's like 60 horsepower, which is enough to get it moving on a downhill section like this, but it's by no means a fast vehicle. As for driving dynamics, though, it's not that bad. Like, I think just having all the weight in the rear makes it a little bit more fun to drive than a normal vehicle with a front engine, front wheel drive setup. But this is not the kind of car where you really want to slide around the corners and try to drift it and stuff because there's so much weight on the rear of the vehicle that if you start to slide it, it's really easy to accidentally lose control of the vehicle and just spin out. So you got to be pretty careful about that whenever you go around a corner. So that's enough driving. How about we go ahead and jump it off the edge right here, hit that tree. And I love jumping there. It's just a great spot to jump, but sometimes you land where it's a little bit awkward to see the vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and just move the vehicle onto the road right there. And now we can actually see the damage a little more clearly if I can get it to stop in time. So pretty beat up, not gonna drive, but the damage does look pretty reasonable. But we can't drive a damaged vehicle, so I'll reset it, and I gotta point out, one of my favorite things about this car are the mud flaps. They all say Skoda on them, and they all bounce around as you drive. As you can see right here, the mud flaps, very, very flexible, and to me, they just look beautiful on this car. They fit really, really well. It makes me wanna go off-roading with the car, though, even though it's not really designed for that. Just having mud flaps makes me think, off-road time, off-road time, but that's probably not the best plan of action there. So how about we go ahead and do another jump. This time we'll go right here because I think that's a nice place to jump. I mean, we'll get a little bit of slow-mo on this crash because it's going to be mostly roof damage, it looks like. A little bit of side damage, actually. Not going to be driving anymore because the engine has actually broke. And we'll take a look at the damage. That was a hard crash that really flattened that side of the car. And a little bit hard to see because of the shadows here. Let's go ahead and try to pull it out of the shadows so we can see it a little more clearly. Whoa! I forgot my polar was on full strength when I removed the hood and stuff. Hey, hey, don't go back in the shadows. Come on, car. What you doing? Get over there. Now we got to chase it. So looking at the damage here, it got wrecked. It's kind of unidentifiable what's going on in some places. But that was a really large crash. So I don't know if I can really say it's good or bad. So we'll just reset it and keep driving for a bit. Maybe we'll do some less severe crashes because those are a little bit easier to judge how they look we'll start off with something nice and simple i see some trees over there i got a car that's a little bit squirrely at times let's make it squirrely by doing some back and forth motion and then whoop, right into the rear and i think that looks perfectly reasonable and thankfully we're actually able to drive still because we hit it on the corner instead of the center where the engine is i'm sure if we hit the center it would not be able to drive but you see where it hit there's actually no engine there it's just empty space so we can keep on going and with all that empty space, this would be a good car to swap a bigger engine into, don't you think? A little bit of a jump right there. That did break the engine. And we'll take a look at the damage there, because that was a pretty minor fall, all things considered. And I think that looks very, very reasonable for the damage there. Kind of interesting that the whole panel right there separated. You got like a big old gap we could look into the engine. So we'll reset it, and then we'll just drive along the little bit of road we have right in front of us. Uh, if we can get going. There we go. Took the car a second to actually get moving because it spawned inside the ground not the car's fault that happens with any vehicle how about another little bit of a crash just a tap tap that was the littlest tap on the tree ever i wanted to tap it a little bit more than that like i know it's damaged but i look at it it's like yeah it looks pretty much flawless the hood of the engine is just a little bit off and i call it the hood because i don't know what else to call it like hood just sounds like the right word for when the engine is inside of that section but doesn't feel right when it's the rear of a car all right, so that one was a bigger tap. That one broke the engine. I mean, it makes sense. All these rear impacts are going to break the engine because that's where the engine is. And damage-wise, that seems pretty reasonable. So we'll reset this and why don't we try out some front-based crashes so that way we can actually see what happens to the front in an impact. 
and the car should be very reliable in those crashes and be able to keep driving for a long time. Much longer than it should be driven, at least that's for sure. We're going to do a nice high speed one to start things off. We're going to go at least 60 miles per hour and I see some really appealing trees over here. That one looks perfect. Got it. Nice hit. Did I lose a wheel? No? That must be the spare tire. I actually never noticed that there's a spare tire on this thing. I'm guessing it's just probably under the vehicle and I never noticed. That makes me wonder though, is it under the vehicle in the front or the rear? I don't know. Anyways, this car is pulling hard to the left, but we can keep it on the road at least. I see another tree right there and kind of an underwhelming sounding crash. Didn't seem like we hit it that hard. And I think we've lost steering completely. I'm trying to go to the right here and it is not going right. I can go ahead and try to pull the car back onto the road though, so let's try that out. Although we gotta remove the bumper to really get a good gripping point, so get out of here. And we'll pull it up onto the road. And let's see if we have any steering at all. I'm gonna back it up. That worked. Now we're gonna go along the road. No, we're not. I'm trying to go to the right and it just wants to go back into the hole, so this car's dead. So I'll bring it back here. And while we take a look at the inside of the vehicle, but I wanna get out of the shade of the tree before we do that. So like right over here is a perfect place to take a peek onto the inside. So you see the inside of this thing? Pretty plain, but it feels like it matches the vehicle. It's not like it's a super high-tech modern vehicle. It's an older vehicle. It was a regular sedan. Nothing super special about it. You can see in the rear and stuff, you have some rear seats. And I really like that there's a book about the car just sitting on the back right there. It's just a little cute detail that I really, really like. And one of the interesting things about this vehicle is the interior is actually pretty significantly different between all the different versions. So we're gonna spawn up the other version so you can see the difference in the interiors. So that's the L, which is like the boring loser version. And then we got the GL, which is the uh, gone losers version of the vehicle, because no losers have this version. So it has a little bit of a different steering wheel and gauge setup. And then it has these really nice stripes on all the chairs. It makes the car feel a lot faster than it actually is. Also, we got different looking headrests here, so you can't see the book behind us, unfortunately. And then we got one more version we could take a look at which I don't know what it stands for. It's a lot of letters. We'll just spawn it up so we can take a look at it though. And once again, I don't feel like being in the grass, so we'll move it a few feet forward, stop it right there, hop in the inside. So this one's got like a rally style wheel. And it looks like the seats are like a nicer material. Like I think it still looks like a cloth material, but the other ones look like a cheap cloth where this is a fancy cloth material. And once again, it also has a different gauge setup. So as for interior functionality, the gauges do work. You can see right here, they are moving as we go, and then the steering wheel works as well, and then although they kind of blend in with the interior, there are pedals down there that are moving as I click them like so. If we turn on the headlights, the gauges light up and they look very, very clear in both the day and night. And we also have high beams and we have different lights for those, so all those little details, they are nice and included. We could also do the blinkers, you have a little light on the dash, and then the stock moves as well for either direction. Very, very nice interiors is what I'm getting at with these cars. All of them have nice interiors. Now they're plain, but they're perfect for the vehicle. And I'm assuming they match the real vehicle. I didn't look it up because they're that convincing. You know, a lot of the time I look it up, like, is that really what that looks like? But this one's like, that's probably what it looks like. Anyways, back to the outside. You can see, do the blinkers work on the outside? Yes, they do. Do the brake lights? Yes, they do. Do the reverse lights? Yes, they do. Everything works on the outside. And I actually really like the lights on this thing because there's so many, there's like, there's just this grid of a bunch of lights all over the place. And it just kind of looks neat. Also, with the fancier versions, you get the name on the spoiler, which looks awesome. Like, that's just such a little detail, but it looks so cool having the name on the spoiler like that. If you got the loser version, for example, because I just let that car drive to wherever it's going, it just has it on the trunk like that, and it's kind of like, eh, whatever. Actually, that's not the trunk, that's just the rear bumper. Yeah, but I think this one has it on the spoiler as well. Yeah, see? That looks cool. All right, we're going to drive this one now because I lost my other one. As for performance though, as far as I can tell, they are identical between all the versions. The trim is just kind of like a uh, cosmetics change in the inside that makes the car look a little bit nicer. But it's still not a sports car or anything, even if you got the GLTZ VUB XL version that I was driving earlier. Also, where is that spare tire? We're going to figure that out real quickly. I saw something fly off. Was that the spare tire? No. Okay, so there's a spare tire in the front. I was wondering about that because normally in a car you'd have the spare tire kind of in the rear but if you have a rear engine car well there wouldn't be room would there? So I guess not and that's why it's up in the front like that. And that's neat you can actually look at the underside and you see it has a really specially made mounting zone for the spare tire that looks pretty nice. Although I did blow out the front suspension so those wheels are just kind of whatever we'll 
Go to the last one I have left. <laughs> oh, well, no, we still have the base version, but I've wrecked that one before. This one hasn't been wrecked yet, though, so we'll try to wreck it up a little bit. Accelerate up this hill! Come on, Skoda, use your 60 horse powers. Here we go. It does have custom engine sounds, so how about I let you listen to that while we go through this tunnel? And that should give you a good idea of how it sounds. So here's another crash. Ooh, it might actually still drive after that if I could pull it off the tree. Let me do this. Let me go ahead and do a save, reset, and then load and... Ah, ah that thing got smashed but thanks to the rear engine setup. The whole front can basically fall off but it can still put power down. We just can't steer at all. We're gonna basically go in circles no matter what I do. I'm trying to make it go to the right. It's basically going straight with a little bit of curve to the left. That's amazing that it's still driving at this situation, but we're not gonna get very far. That's that's it, that's pretty much as far as we got. How about we reset it and take one more look at that damage because that is just a crazy looking crash right there. And yeah, the car crumpled a lot, but it was a pretty high speed. And this isn't the most durable car since it's an older car. So I think that could reasonably happen. And while we have the GLTZ UBBBA version out, we can actually take a look at some of the other cosmetic changes. They're minor, but they are worth noting. It has a different front to it. So like if we go to the front of this one over here, you see it just looks different. That's all there is to it. Same with this one. It has a different front, although this one's all sad because it's damaged. we we'll reset it. And a different front on that one as well. Just a bunch of options for the front of the car. I'm assuming it's just based on trim, maybe also by year as well. In the end though, I think I like the GL R2D2 C3PO version the best just because it has so much going on. Now, those lights don't come on when you use the high beams, but if you put on the fog lights with Alt-N, you can get those lights on and you just have so many lights blaring anybody in front of you. It looks hilarious. You even got a little bit of a light on the rear. Like, everybody's gonna see you. There's gonna be an astronaut in space like, what is that strange light? It's like, it's just my Skoda. Because it makes so much brightness. Whoa, whoa. Ah, I think I just bottomed out and blew out the suspension again. I did the exact same thing last time. Right there, there's just a killer dip right there that destroys suspensions. Although we can keep driving, they did a little bit of a flip and... I think, yeah, we still have steering, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and crash into a couple of houses real quickly. Hello, house. I'm home. Is that the spare tire that came off? Yes, it was. Do we still have steering? Uh, maybe on the left side? Okay, we got a little bit of steering on the left side, right side. Yeah, I guess we do as well. It's just not as cooperative as the left side. Keep on it. Keep on it. And we're gonna find another tree to crash into. I see a good appealing tree right up there. Nice 40 mile per hour crash. Uh oh, are we stuck? Yes, we're stuck, so we're gonna do another save and load. So we'll save, reset, and load. Take a look at the damage. That thing is really getting beat up. What's it look like on the inside? The inside is faring very well for all these crashes because there's really not much of the front left and the inside still looks like it should. And we got basically no steering at this point because I'm trying to go to the right. But as you see, we are simply circling in the left over and over again, so we'll just have to go ahead and reset this. And you probably noticed in all the crashes, it looks like the front is kind of popping off to the side, and you might be wondering, well, why is it doing that? That's because it's actually hinged at the side. So let's see if we can open this thing up and show you. Now, I'm pretty sure it's hinged on the driver's side. So if we grab it from this side and try to open it up, it should open. There we go. So you can see that's how it's hinged. So that's why whenever we get in a crash, it kind of pops up like that. It's because the hinge is holding it on. And then whenever it gets crashed, the rest of it kind of crumples upwards like that. So if you're loading things into it, that does seem like a pretty practical way to do it. Because if you open it from right here in the front, well, you're not going to be able to really get things in because it'll just be blocking everything. They could have also hinged it like a normal car's hood as well, I guess. But maybe they did it to the side because if you overfill it and it doesn't latch down properly, it doesn't flip open and blow your windshield out. It just kind of pops to the side a little bit and will still be drivable while you try to come to a stop before you crash. Because I would think you still have enough visibility right here to be able to not crash the vehicle. But if you didn't have visibility, this is what a crash would look like. Do a little bit of slow-mo on this one. And there goes all of my beautiful headlights. They're ruined. And we got a wheel flying off again. That's a spare. And we'll look at the damage right here. Got a little crumpled in the front right there. But there's not much there, so that's all right, I guess. 
And since we got three cars out here, why don't we have a little bit of fun with that? We'll tell the AI to go ahead and come at me and we'll see how long we can avoid them. We're going to try to stay in a reasonably small area though, so that way I don't just simply outrun them and they have a chance to hopefully catch me. But I will be doing some off-roading because, again, when I look at this vehicle, I think, man, that would be great for off-roading. How does the AI do for off-roading? Well, they're gone. <laughs> Maybe we won't do that. I don't know what happened. <laughs> The two stooges over here, they just crashed into each other. Okay, maybe that's too many cars for the AI. We need to separate them out a little bit. So I'll bring one of the AIs with me a little bit down the road, or he's just going to drive off into the dirt. Okay, you can drive off into the dirt. Where'd the other guy go? He's in the dirt too. <laughs> the AI is so dumb sometimes. Come on, guys. All right, looks like they're both finally coming at me. This guy actually has momentum, though, so he might be able to rear in me because I'm not going to be able to accelerate in time. Oh, this is not good. We got to just do some maneuvers to avoid them. Cutting through the dirt. Nope. Well, yep. There goes the pop in the frunk. Let's see. Can we see if we're in here and the frunk pops? Yeah, you can still see good enough to drive. No problem. As I mentioned earlier, I think you would be able to. Now I know you could be able to. Oh, oh good. We can drive through the stop sign because, yeah, I just drove through the stop sign. So I'm too distracted to actually pay attention to the AI. That's the bad thing. Like, I'm just kind of cruising along. Don't even consider them a threat. And, yeah, that's why. I, I just kind of did a quick 180 and they crash into a building. And they're gone. AI, you disappoint me. All right, you know what? Let's do this. Front impact. Let's go. Yeah. I will admit it was a little underwhelming, but it was still fun to watch. How about, hey, there you are, other dude. I'm about to say, though, how about we go ahead and do some suspension test kind of stuff so we'll make our way over to grid map. And I admit, I really want to do this just so I can see the mud flaps bounce all over the place. Because I think it's going to look really funny watching them bounce. At least, I hope it does. We'll also try to do the loop afterwards. I don't think that's going to go so well, but... Let's watch it do the test. Slow-mo activated so we can see it nice and clear. I think actually four times slow-mo is pretty good for this. And the mud flaps are doing it! They're bouncing all over the place! The car is bouncing all over the place! The car is going to flip over. Oh my goodness. The big suspension test is too much for the car. We need to do the smaller suspension test. Okay. So smaller suspension test, try number two, we'll again do four times slow and watch these mud flaps go. So now they're actually not bouncing as much because it can actually do the suspension test without much problem. It's a really soft suspension setup made for cruising and it's actually going through this super smooth. Like you look at the body of the vehicle, it's barely moving and the suspension is just bouncing through the bumps very, very cleanly. That was nice. I would assume this would be a very comfortable car to be in. I almost want to see that from the inside because it looks so smooth. First, let's see. Can we do this? Not quite enough speed. Not quite. Very, very close, but not quite. Right, let's see that from the inside, though, because I want to see how smooth it looks like in the inside. So full speed this time. And that, yeah, that looks really smooth because those are big bumps. And there's only just a little bit of jiggle to the car. Nice. And we're not going to try this again because I know it's going to fail. So instead... Hop off the side, watch the dramatic camera angle crash. Oh, camera, what are you doing? It missed the car. It missed the car. It tried its best, though. Can we drive it all? Looks like we can. With the car really wrecked up, it could still do a little bit. This would be a really interesting car for a destruction derby, I think, though, with the rear engine setup. Because you don't have to worry about trying to protect the front. You just crash into everything with your front until you lose steering, basically. But if somebody crashes you into the rear, then you're gonna have some serious problems. Anyways, let's go ahead and finish things up with a, a good old Brutal Slope Lethal Death combo. Start off with Brutal Slope. And it really doesn't matter what version we use here, unless you're like me and you want to see all the headlights get destroyed. In which case, you got to use the GLTUX EDO, because that's the only one with all the extra lights, so it can see everything. You can even see through time, it's so bright. So down the hill we'll go, I think this thing only has a 5-speed transmission. And I'm kind of afraid of the engine blowing up at high speed, so we'll probably just clutch in once we get up to speed. We can still accelerate down the hill initially. Oh, this is going to be a hard car to control now that I think about it. Because with all the weight in the rear again, as I said earlier, if you start to slide, it's hard to recover. That's going to be doubly true here. So we're just going to try to keep it straight. But yeah, it's, it's slippery. You see right here? I can't. I'm just doing the best I can to keep it straight. That's my only goal right here. Thankfully, it looks like we're going to make it correctly and we're going to have the impact right here. So with no engine in the front, this thing should crunch down very, very nicely right here. 100 times slow-mo. And easy crunching, easy crunching. And there's nothing left but the hood. Yeah, that's it. The hood with the engine. That's it. All right, go ahead and do full speed on this thing. Got a few parts flying all over the place. Hubcaps bouncing. 
Yep, that is thoroughly destroyed. Nothing else to do here, so let's go ahead and head on over to Leap of Death. There it is. And once again, you already know, we're going to be using the G L A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z version of the vehicle, so we can see those headlights fly all over the place, although we really couldn't see them in Brutal Slope. Like, I tried to look at them, but they just got crunched too easily. This time, though, we should be able to see them a little bit. Got a decent speed going down here, about 50 miles per hour should get us a good a solid flight then impact I think we'll do a slow-mo run at the start and then maybe a full speed run afterwards because with the full speed ones sometimes the camera angle just sucks and you can't see what's going on see with slow-mo I can control the camera angle and let it be perfect up oh, there goes the engine the engine just fell out of the vehicle all right it actually did a lot better than I was expecting because it hit where the engine was so I guess that's kind of like the vehicle's strong point so I was able to hold its shape because I can still identify this vehicle. Oh, it's stuck. Well, we'll try this one more time. This time we're going to just uh, go ahead and go full speed, no slow-mo. And I'll try to make sure the angle's a little bit different. I'll like go off the corners, tip a little bit, and get like a nice roll maybe. There we go. Good roll. Can we do a complete one? Yes. How about two? Maybe even three it looks like. Uh-oh. Yeah, two and sort of three. We're rolling in an awkward way now. Again, we hit right on the rear. That time it didn't hold up quite as well because the angle it hit at. But it could keep falling and hopefully we'll get all the way to the bottom. It doesn't seem very likely though because we're going pretty slow. We're just kind of rolling down the hill. I have to get really lucky with all the bounces and make sure the car just doesn't get stuck in a crevice in any way. Although it seems like it's doing a good job of skating. So it doesn't actually do impacts like that because the impacts like that, that's what stops the car from getting all the way to the bottom. But if it skates kind of like it is right here, that helps it get to the bottom. So it actually might make it, which I did not expect for how slow we took off and the angle we took off. I figured we would get stuck because we did last time, but this is going like right over every crevice perfectly. Like, look at that! Right on that little tip part to make sure it didn't get stuck. Alright, what's it gonna do right here? Is it gonna be perfect again? Oh, it actually fell in, but it kind of just funnels it to the water. So it does make it all the way. Cool! Alright. So that will do it for the Skoda. Till next time, this is YBR. I'll see ya!